Hello everyone and welcome back to my playthrough of Nobody Wants to Die. Last time we saw the Icarus, a giant blimp where bigwigs were having a party. Um, seemingly had some kind of uh, explosion go off and went down. And it was our chance to try and find uh, Kovalev, one of the people that we uh, suspected for the uh, murder of Green, of Edward Green, uh, to be on it. So when we inspected the scene, we eventually found out that Kovalev was the one that caused the explosion. He was basically uh, there as a imitating a bartender and set off big explosions. We're, we never really... Well, I don't want to say we never found out why. We, we were about to leave not knowing why until we got a call on our radio, I guess, the thing in our ear, our phone. And a stranger pointed us to another dead body we missed. Uh, the director of the CTC, the people that basically created the Icarite. The little, I guess, chip that they put in the back of your head that keeps all your memories and your personalities and they put you in like a new body. And it seems that he was the reason. His, uh, like, the uh, Kovalev wanted to kill the CTC uh, CEO. And the stranger asked us to basically destroy the Icarite, setting back, um, you know, potential issues with, uh, you know, the body taxes, the the uh, the law, uh, the age like going of subscription going down from like twenty one to twenty, stopping all that at least temporarily. And we said no. While. It may have seemed like the right thing to do. And as, I don't want to say morally corrupt, as morally amb ambivalent we sometimes are, that's not the road I wanted to head down. And I want to see where the story goes. Because, again, I'm trying to play more as like a 90s, 90s, like a 20s or 30s noir actual detective. They may be morally compromised at times, but they would never do something like this. So that's that's the road we're going down, and that's where we basically stopped. Uh, we made our way out of there I right before so great finish blowing up. Great hand, and damn was I right. Instead of dead, I was ahead for once, and ready to break the case of the century. Yeah, we picked up a card from uh, from the safe. That was in the in the club. Hey, Chief. Did you hear they served scotch with lead at Icarus? I didn't hear anything. Especially not from you. Because you weren't fucking there. I got some evidence. Ties to green. Rock solid. Fuck. First you send me that bullshit report, and now you got evidence. You listen to me right now. You weren't there. Understand? And we're not talking now, either. In fact, I haven't spoken to you since the accident. Got it? Chief. Nope. That's it. I'm pulling you off this case. Steiner, out. Rusty old bastard. Why do you have to throw me off the case? Because it's all politics. And that's the thing, like, with with games like this set in, like, a dystopian future. Like, it's all politics. You know, cops are bought off. You know, police chiefs are bought off. Like, there's only one way they want the story to go. There's no you know, uh, like left side or right side or the middle side. There's no viewpoints. It's just the one way. And that's, it's just crazy that like, that's, that's how it always seems to go. Okay, it's my fault. Somebody bribed him. He got cold feet. I don't know if somebody bribed him. So I, I'm pretty sure someone bribed him. I'm going to say he got cold feet. 
Steiner's just trying to cover his own ass. Yeah. Hide behind regulations, minimize damage, not solve the case. I thought he had bigger balls. Fuck. Learn something new every day, I guess. No doubt about it, this case smells worse than a two-week-old corpse in a storm drain. So many victims. Who's really behind it all? I don't know his name, but I can already tell what kind of man he is. So, pro a self-proclaimed judge, a depraved rich asshole, or a pseudo-revolutionary? I don't think he's a depraved rich asshole. Because why would he care about the poor if he was rich? Self-proclaimed judge, a pseudo-revolutionary. I mean, those things are fairly close to the same thing in my eyes, especially in this case. I'm gonna go this route. Some fucking philosophy major dropout, screaming about remaking society without even realizing he's just covering up his own pathetic insecurities. I try to stop thinking about it. Try to back away, shut it down, for one simple reason. This would be a nice view if there wasn't so many fucking cables everywhere. Orders are orders, the trail's gone cold, or I can't expose Sarah. I don't care about orders or orders. Trails gone cold. Possibly. We do no trails not gone cold. We have a lead. We have that card. I can't expose Sarah. I I, I have some. I have some loyalty to Sarah. Much as I like the idea of throwing myself into the city's abyss, if I do that, I'll drag other people down with me, and Sarah doesn't deserve that. This city has a disease, something festering, somewhere deep down, underneath the routine of concrete and steel, below the predatory grin of the neon lights an infection has set in. It's like... like everybody started having the same nightmares. Night after night, I know the dream. The one that makes me wake up drenched in sweat. Hard about to crack open. Scream locked in my throat. Losing control when I'm falling or somebody's chasing me. Um... I think losing control. Because I think that's what... Because he, he's not fully synchronized with his body yet, right? We keep on seeing... Uh, what was it? Rachel, I think? I'm guessing his girlfriend or wife or whatever. And that's something that I think a lot of people would fear, especially being put in a new body. Not being fully in control. When my whole world spins out of control and flies apart... No matter how hard I try to keep it together. You know, I just realized I can't tell if we're looking. Uh oh. <gasps> oh, fuck. Never mind. I was about to say, I can't tell if we're looking up or if we're looking down. Ah. Uh. This has been one supremely shitty day. Lucky for me, I got just the thing to help get through it. Go to the car. What's this? Old Zed. Man's a classic. True professional. He'll fix any machine you bring him. As long as you're not picky about where the parts come from. Wow, those people are moving really fast. Jesus, those people are like running. The opera. 
Take away the singing and the shitter break in the middle, and all you got left is your average daytime soap. I mean, that's literally what an opera is. Another starless night. No surprise there. This much air pollution. Every night's starless. What do you mean, air pollution? You can't even see the fucking sky. With this many buildings. Fuck air pollution. Is there anything else? Yeah. One of the most expensive restaurants in the city. And the tiniest fucking servings I've ever seen in my life. Pitiful. Yeah. That's one thing I've always hated about, like, upscale restaurants. It's like, if I'm gonna pay, like, $300 for dinner, I better be fucking full when I leave. Oh, fucking disgusting. At night, they ventilate the ground floor plants. They say it's necessary. Necessary to dump even more pollution into the air. <laughs> Fuckers. I think that's all of it. Yeah. Let's get in the car. The stubbornest, most talented bastard I've ever known. Coach TH. Cool. Let's check the engine. Jump oh, the for person. fuck's sake. Check engine again. Just had it in the shop last week. <sighs> Fuck it. I'll take it out of Zed's hide later. Can we actually go to Zed's? Pull the trigger! Do it! Take a look. Just you and me. Suppose I could have borrowed something from Icarus. Oh well. Too late now. Uh, put away. Again, not going down the drunk PI route. The fucking rich. Even the dead can take someone off a case. Uh, so it feels breath on my neck. We don't have a moment to lose. We must bite. Complete the plan. Green. Okay. Acid rain. Citizen. Ambient pollution density is increasing by 2% each year. This translated into a need for more frequent decontamination, as well as general decrease in bodily endurance. Reduce your exhaust emissions. In the, in the name of common good. There's still exhaust coming out of these things? All this risk for a fucking piece of plastic. Can't even tell what it's for. Edward Green, dead. We received information from unofficial sources about the possible final death of Edward Green. Not a single case of unsuccessful Icarite transplantation has happened in over a hundred years. I mean, we just saw uh, one of the bodyguards in the previous episode get struck right through the Icarite. But that guy's dead too. So what could be the cause of this tragedy? Shocking conclusions on page two. Controversial law with no veto. The president, despite previously made promise, despite previously made promises, did not veto the bill set to reduce the free body subscription cutoff to the age of 20. It was the most difficult decision of my political career, but as president, it was my responsibility to shoulder the burden. To you citizens, I promise one thing. Complete speech on page three. 
Imagine having to pay for your body before you can even fucking, like, drink, smoke. I mean, I live in Canada. It's, it's, we have a lower age range for that. But in the States, I know you have to be 21. I don't know about smoking, but drinking, you definitely have to be 21. Weather. Meteorologists predict an increase in the level of air pollution, intensified de decontamination procedures, uh, chance of thunderstorms, and heavy rainfall. Air temperature from a low 55 to a high of 59. Again, what thunderstorms? There's no fucking sky. Like, I know there's a sky up there, but you can't fucking see it. What are thunderstorms going to do? Alright, how do I... How do I go? How do I... How do I go to the next area? Do I figure something out? It's pointing to this. Do I really have to drink it? <sighs> yep. Tastes just like it smells. The Icarus disaster has shaken the city. Now new facts have come to light, which will bring you live in just a moment, in an exclusive special report. I wonder how Sarah is dealing with it. Call Sarah. Hello? Hi, Sarah. Are you listening to the radio? It's the middle of the night. Are you drinking again? And driving. Relax. I'm on autopilot. You or the car? Uh -huh. Did you hear? Icarus is already in the news. Oh, no shit, Sherlock. They've been trumpeting it all over the media for an hour. Wait till they find out politicians have tried to lower the age of free body subscriptions again. People are gonna lose it. Maybe people will finally make a stand. Maybe they'll finally get around to doing something about it. Hopefully. I mean, I know we can't get involved, but... Someone needs to tell them enough is enough. Do you know that I barely saved up for my first subscription? All the money was spent on living. If I had to pay a year earlier, I, I probably wouldn't be here. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Thousands of people in the same boat every year. Not everyone makes it. And these fucks want to take away what little chance they have. Assholes. Politicians aren't people. They're assholes. That's right. People's lives depend on these decisions. They're what decides if you end up in the freezer or not. Cool off. You're young. Oh, fuck off with that bullshit. I really can't understand it. I mean, they knew about the consequences. How can they just make decisions like that between drinks? Like human lives mean nothing? Are there any moral boundaries left? Hmm. I kind of like the second one, but it's I think it's a little too existential. Now I'm going to go with the first one. Boundaries still exist. We may not cross them, but some people are just evil and don't try to understand them. Why? Because they're bastards, and only other bastards can understand them. Okay, hang on, Mr. Pessimism. Did you just admit there are good people in the world, and they include us? Let's hope. 
Let's hope so. Otherwise, we're in deep shit. <laughs> okay, that sounds more like you. I was starting to worry. You know, I didn't think it was possible, but... Looks like we're on the same page. Finally. James, can I ask you something personal? Sure. Sure. Go ahead. Do you believe in life after death? The real one? And I thought I was the drunk one here. Well, apparently in the past, people used to ask stuff like that all the time. Because the average lifespan was less than a hundred years. And now? Can we believe in anything beyond this? Okay. Wait a sec. Uh. All right. Not asking for my own personal beliefs, but based on the character that we're playing, because I like to get into the role of the character. I think the guy that we're playing is a bit of a hopeless romantic, believes in something um, believes in something beyond what we're capable of. And given the fact that he's like pining after a woman who may or may not be dead, we have no idea. I think he's the kind of guy that would believe in an afterlife. So I'm going to go that route. Sure I do. Rachel believes it too. Oh, fuck. I'm sorry. I... I forgot. I overstepped. R relax. It, nothing happened. What if you could choose? The bank or death? <laughs> oh, shit. Death? I would absolutely... This is... To me... Like, living in a world with, like, flying cars and shit like that, and, like, seeing how far technology can go, and, like, even the concept of trans... I mean, it's not pure transcendence, but, like, being able to store all your thoughts, memories in a chip and put it in another body sounds really cool. But if you really think about it, it's really fucked up. Because, like, there are people, like, um... Like, imagine waking up one day and you're in a completely different body and you have to get used to that body and let's say 50 years on line you gotta put yourself in another body and you gotta get used to that body you know the different face and like how it feels and all that some people for some people that that sounds really cool not for me I'm not the kind of guy that wants to live forever that's that's not my jam and I don't think that this guy would be too. I know, I know I just said I don't want to put my own personal beliefs in it. But come on, who would want to live in this kind of society? Seriously. Death for me. Death. Maybe I'd meet Rachel in a better world. It's, um... It's a beautiful vision. I hope it's true. <clears throat> Damn it. <clears throat> Bloody hell. James? James, what's going on? Take the medicine. Don't drink it. I keep thinking we're gonna fall. <sighs> the charms of an E-class shell. We got it from a junkie. Still having synchro issues? Um, how honest do we want to be here? No, uh, I, I manage. I manage. Slight shivering, nothing else. You know what's funny? I get the worst shakes in the toilet. Well, that might be where the last guy I like to shoot up. Part of that may be conditioning. Memory imprinted on the shell. When the body gets certain signals, it's trained to react, expecting the drugs. Okay, got it. You were the one who took notes at school. Do you take care of regular synchro tests? Are you taking ambrosia? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm an exemplary citizen. It's important that you do it. Thanks for caring. This is my fourth body. I can wow. handle it. What are the weirdest synchro issues you've heard of? Do you think people can swap bodies indefinitely? 
I'm more interested in the second option. Do you think people can swap bodies indefinitely? Well, the longest living guy turns 305 this year, and he's doing great. The city is co-funding his birthday. You can go ask him. Seriously, it's all about the money. The more we have, the longer we live. The capitalist wet dream. I think consciousness says as an expiration date. Yeah. I agree with that. I think consciousness has an expiration date. Sooner or later, our psyche gives out. I don't know. If someone had offered me 269 more years, that would be plenty for me. Well, as for your issues, how did the last Icarite transfer go? Why do you ask? Well, did it go smoothly, or did you feel something along the way? I'm gonna tell the truth. Apparently, we're unaware during the transfer, but damn, I remember the burning and itching all over my body. I thought I was going crazy. Seth, my partner, said something was weighing him down. He also knew a guy who felt like he was falling off of a cliff every time he changed bodies. That's probably nothing unusual. I don't know if I need to worry about that. Attention! Vehicle in a drift prohibited zone. Hands up! What are you holding? Uh, seriously? Seriously? Don't you have anything better to do? I advise you to cooperate. What's your name? I'm police. I'm on the job, for fuck's sake. You will be held responsible for making false statements. So tell the fucking truth. What are you doing here? Second. I'm resting after I fucked up half the city with a train. Two weeks ago? Maybe you heard about it. I have his data. James Kara, badge number 984. He's Department of Mortality, but not active in the system. Holy shit. It really is that psycho from the train. One last time. What are you oh doing God. here in the middle of the night? Do you want to look down or up or around you and see, like, the millions of other fucking cars passing by? Like, what the fuck? Uh... I'm on a brake ventilator cleaning. I'm gonna go with number two. Can't you see? I'm drinking because I have a rotten job. Shit. James, there's a bolo from the car from Icarus. Hey, check that out. How'd your vehicle get those marks? Uh, I picked it up at the workshop like this. Good question. Shit, he was already like this when I picked it up at the workshop. Got it from Zed. You guys know him? Old bastard gave me a voucher for a car wash. Good luck finding one open at this hour. Shit! Bolo for a 99 Bluebird! Hands in the air! Don't move! Tow the car right now! Scan the fucker. Hey! Do not move! Hands where we can see him! Did you get rid of the evidence from Icarus? No. Fuck! They're gonna take us both in! Okay, the truth. They threw me off the case. Okay, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll spill. Yes, I was on the Icarus, but they threw me off the case. Chief Steiner himself gave the- James, you stupid cunt! Will you just shut the fuck up? You're making it worse! We're placing you under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Attention all nearby units. Burglary in process at the jewelers. Corner of 11th and 58th, floor 117. Repeat, all nearby units. Staff, repeat, burglary in progress. Corner of 11th and 58th, floor 117. Ah, fuck this guy. Let's go. Bye. Oh, you forgot this. No? Alright. Almost got us. 
Did it work? Did they take the bait? The bait? Did you call in a fake burglary? Uh-huh. It was all I could think of. Not bad. Well, well. I'm impressed. Thanks for saving my ass. <sighs> One thing, though. Cunt? Seriously? <laughs> I panicked. By the way, the reason I, I gave, like I said, the truth is because I don't give a fuck about the police chief. Twice, he's hung me out to drive. Uh, to drive. To dry. After I did him a favor of, like, doing this job. After he coaxed me, coaxed us to go, to do this for him. He threw us under the bus twice. So fuck him. I don't care if he's bribed or if he's just got cold feet. Fuck him. Okay, James. I'm no expert, but the universe seems to be telling you to go home. You believe in science? I believe it's 2 a.m. and I'm getting sick of you. Uh... No, let's talk about the investigation. Uh, wait. We still have to talk about the investigation. There are a few things that bother me. <sighs> well, keep it short. Okay. The bartender from Icarus's Key, I've been thinking about the type the murder represents. We know Green didn't commit suicide. Um... The bartender from Icarus's Key, I mean... Yes and no. It's it's pointless, because he's, he's dead. Um... Anything that we find of him... Like, any more information, it's not really going to help us. Uh, we know Green didn't commit suicide, yeah. But, I mean, that's that's obvious. I'm going to go with the second option. I was thinking about the murderer. So how did our pseudo-revolutionary get past the velvet rope to Green and Icarus? Hmm. If you look at the pieces of the puzzle carefully... There's something about everyone that doesn't fit, right? Exactly. I think I know what it is. It's paranoia. You know the saying the sleep of reason produces monsters? Put down the vodka and rest. It'll pass. There are demons in me. Hey. Ooh. Oh yeah, improve that. Did I throw it? Well, maybe I have to continue this. Sarah, I have a lot of demons in me. Then take those demons home and put them to bed. Over and out. Aww. Aww. Ooh, it did fly. Cool. There are a lot of little touches like this in this game that I really enjoy. I'm trying to move forward, but I can I move faster. No. Am I even moving? Yeah, yeah. Look at those guys. Rachel. Okay, I guess I have to keep moving. As slowly as possible. I've been tangled by seaweed. Kelp me. Kelp me. Get it? Backwards.
Waking Sarah up for a drunken call was as healthy as my usual cigarette dinner. But I needed this conversation. And something told me she needed it too. Anyway, it was a nice contrast with all these conversations that leave me hung over even when I don't drink. True. I shouldn't be driving like this. Don't fall. Like the whole city's turning to dust, and I still feel the festive atmosphere. We gather around the fire, sing songs, argue about politics. Thanks to this charade, you've lied to yourself for another year that your life matters. Shit. I have to go home. Okay, I'm actually going to stop it there. Um, it was a nice little chat that we got to have with uh, with Sarah. Um, I wonder if we'll ever really get to see her. I don't think we will. Um, now that I think about it, I don't think we've seen any live bodies. I don't think we've seen like a living person yet. Yeah, I just realized that. Anyways, hope you guys are enjoying the playthrough. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.